Ladies and gentlemen, the inaugural lecture of the Ao Chik Ko and Ao Lung Shuk Yin Professorship in Biomedical Engineering by Professor Babara Chan will now commence. Please rise for the official procession. <laughs> Please be seated. Please welcome Professor Rocky Tuan, the Vice Chancellor and President of the Chinese University of Hong Kong to deliver a vote of thanks to Ms. Betty Ao. Professor Tuan, please. <laughs> Ms. Betty Ao, Professor Andrew Chan, Professor Barbara Chan, distinguished guests, colleagues and friends, ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon. First of all, a very warm welcome to all of you. Today, we gather here to celebrate the inauguration of Professor Barbara Chan as the Ao Jiko and Ao Leung Sok Yi Professor of Biomedical Engineering. This is an occasion made possible by the generosity and benefaction of a proud CUHK alumna, Ms. Betty Augapik. Ms. Ao graduated with a bachelor degree in social science from CUHK's United College. If I read my uh, information correctly, United College wasn't even located uh, here at that point. It was in the old uh, United College place, somewhere else. Over the years, Ms. Ao has witnessed the blooming development of CUHK as well as United College. Although she has been in residence in Canada most of the time after her graduation, she has remained closely connected with her alma mater, particularly United College, through active engagements in alumni activities. We are very proud to have her support for the university's 60th anniversary celebratory events and are most grateful for her generous donation which enables CUHK to further our commitment to high impact research in a year of such historic significance to the university. With great passion for advancing the development of CUHK, Ms. Ao has made valuable contributions that have provided vital resources and opportunities to enhance the quality of education at the university, including scholarships to support students to realize their full potential. Now, Ms. Ao has taken her philanthropic spirit further by establishing the Ao Jek Go and Ao Leung Sok Yin Professorship in Biomedical Engineering, named after her parents, in support of an important and timely research area in CUHK. We are deeply grateful to Ms. Ao for her foresight in identifying biomedical engineering and regenerative medicine as areas holding great promises for revolutionizing global healthcare and improving the lives of millions around the world and extending her goodwill to CUHK's School of Biomedical Science, the Department of Biomedical Engineering, and the Institute of Tissue Engineering and Regenerative Medicine in support of their cutting edge programs. Now these areas happen to be things that I love also. So if I seem to be very partial, there's a reason. Uh, so again, Betty, thanks so much for uh, uh, sharing your uh, enthusiasm in these areas. Now let me come to the, uh, the main uh, character of today's event, Zhu Gao, uh, and that's Professor Barbara Chan. 
Barbara Chen is a distinguished expert in tissue engineering and regenerative medicine. Incidentally, also a CUHK alum, who is internationally acknowledged for her work in biomaterial engineering and stem cell-based cartilage tissue repair with the aim to improve the quality of life of patients suffering from degenerative joint diseases. The frequency of degenerative joint diseases is approximately one out of six or seven. So let me see. Uh, so it is a very serious health condition. Again, this is an area that I myself also love. So um, I really believe that Barbara's work uh, will have significant uh, uh, contribution to the field. Now, I've known Barbara for a long time. Okay, I won't tell you how long. Barbara knows how long. Uh, let's see, uh, I need more than one hand. I, anyway, two hands. Uh, but anyway, so I've known her for a long time and I have watched Barbara blossom uh, from a uh, bright-eyed, enthusiastic, highly talented person, investi young investigator, she's still a young investigator, but a uh, young investigator to a very accomplished scientist, a great teacher, an inspiration to her students and postdoctoral fellows. So I am so pleased, I am so very, very pleased that I'm able to convince Barbara to join us here uh, and uh, come back to the CU family, uh, so to speak, uh, to help us to develop the area of biomedical engineering, regenerative medicine, cell-based therapy uh, in, for an, a, a very important medical uh, area that, uh, as uh, the demographic shows, we are all getting older and older. Uh, let's put it this way. More and more people are getting older and older. And so the uh, challenges will be even more intense in the coming years. Barbara is genuinely committed to translating her research outcomes to novel technologies that can bring practical benefits to human health. Now, the generous philanthropic support of Ms. Ao will assuredly further enhance the translation and clinical application of Professor Chan's research to benefit patients. So please allow me to extend my warmest wishes to Professor Chan and my deep gratitude to Ms. Ao once again for her magnanimous commitment to the development of CUHK as a civic institution, one that will bring benefits to mankind and society. So ladies and gentlemen, may you have a most fruitful and enjoyable time. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Tuan. I now invite Professor Tuan, accompanied by Professor Andrew Chan, the Acting Dean of Medicine, and Professor Barbara Chan to present a certificate of appreciation to Miss Betty Ao. Ms. Betty Ao would also like to present a Chinese calligraphy as a gift for the celebration of the 60th anniversary of the university. Thank you, please be seated. Professor Andrew Chan, the Acting Dean of Medicine, will now introduce Professor Barbara Chan. Professor Chan, please. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce our speaker for today's inauguration lecture, Professor Barbara Chan. With an impressive academic and professional background, Professor Chan has made significant 
significant contributions to the field of tissue engineering and regenerative medicine. Now a little bit of background. <laughs> uh, Professor Barbara Chan completed her bachelor's degree in biochemistry and obtained her PhD degree in surg surgical science from the Chinese University of Hong Kong. She then received a postdoctoral training fellowship in laser medicine from the Massachusetts General Hospital and later on served the biomedical engineering program of the University of Hong Kong since 2003. Currently, she has joint appointment in the School of Biomedical Sciences, Department of Biomedical Engineering, and Institute of Tissue Engineering and Regenerative Medicine, or I-TERM, at CUHK. With a vision to improve the quality of life in patients, Barbara established the Tissue Engineering Laboratory to develop biomaterial and cell-based technologies for use in personalized therapies. At a professional level, Barbara is a fellow of Tissue Engineering and Regenerative Medicine of Termis. She's also a chartered engineer and chartered scientist of the Institute of Materials, Minerals, and Mining. She's also a registered authorized person for Advanced Therapeutic Products, or ATPs, in Hong Kong. Barbara is a good citizen of the scientific and professional communities, uh, serving as editors in major journals and as grant reviewers in multiple international funding agencies, both in Europe and in Asia, such as Singapore. Recently, she also served as a member of the Task Force on Regulations of Advanced Therapeutic Products in Hong Kong. In the realm of knowledge exchange, Barbara has developed 13 patented technologies. She is also involved in co-founding a technology startup company focusing on personalized tissue engineering therapies, showcasing her commitment to translating research into practical applications. In translational research, Barbara has developed a series of stem cell-derived bioengineered complex tissue graphs, including cartilage uh, and bone tissues, that showed uh, impressive regeneration outcomes. Probably she's going to talk about that. Her main goal is to translate these research findings into GMP-gray therapeutic products for first in human clinical trial. And hopefully this research will lead to effective treatment for cartilage damages and joint problems globally. Um, Barbara is also active in inventing many enabling technologies, among them the multi-photon, microfabrication and micropatterning technology, or MMM, uh, which is a powerful laser-based 3D microprinting technology uh, that allows the reconstitution of cells uh, in their natural environment. So these technology will be, uh, uh, have considerable applications in drug discovery and screening. Finally, Barbara is very much a basic scientist at heart, and she's been researching in the fundamental mechanism of how cells are interacting uh, with their microenvironment. So without any further delay, um, I will pass the stage uh, to her. So please join me in welcoming Professor Barbara Chan. Thank you, Professor Chan. And I'll invite you and Professor Tuan to take your seats in the audience. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in giving a warm welcome to Professor Barbara Chan. Professor Chan, please. Thank you, um, our VC. Thank you, Professor Chan. Um, thank you, Ms. Betty Ao, and um, my um, mentors, my teachers, and uh, my colleagues, and my um, lab members, and um, previous lab members, and current lab members. Um, 
my family, my friends, um, and ladies and gentlemen, um, thank you very much. And um, I'm really um, excited to come back to my home, uh, the Chinese University of Hong Kong. Um, and today is really a um, very um, touching um, um, occasion that I can see um, all my friends, my mentors, my um, um, teachers and lecturers as well um, here um, in this hall. And today I actually want to do two things. The first thing is to express my um, gratitude to every one of you. Um, the second thing is to do a tissue engineering 101. I try to um, um, convince you that the research direction that we are working on is exciting. Uh, but uh, first of all, I would like to express my um, deepest gratitude to Ms. Betty Ao um, for your generosity to the university and continuous support to the university, uh, particularly in setting up this um, um, Ao Chiko and um, Ao Leung Suk Yin uh, professorship in biomedical engineering. Um, so myself and uh, all my group members will continue to work hard um, to develop um, um, useful technologies to help um, to improve the healthcare and uh, hopefully um, can um, help uh, people who suffer. So today the topic um, of my lecture is building tissues from scratch. So first of all, <laughs> I would like to uh, thank um, um, CUHK because um, I <laughs> these yeah <laughs> I, I was surprised <laughs> to see this picture as well. Um, so um, I graduated in biochemistry of CUHK and um, I mean please do <laughs> try to find out yourself some of you and um, so this is a great great university because we receive the education and we build friendship. And perhaps one of the biggest achievements is to have your better half, <laughs> to meet your better half as well, uh, my husband, uh, William. Um, so I still, so can you find yourself here? <laughs> Professor from Gopui. <laughs> so this is a graduation uh, photo that we took. <laughs> and um, uh, in biochemistry, I still remember um, we, um, we have this um, lab session that um, we have to do uh, a laboratory session and then we go down to the medical canteen and then we, we, we wait for those experiments <laughs> to finish before we, we can go back and collect results. So those were the days that, um, you know, are really full of a uh, lot of um, uh, joyful mem memories. And um, I did my PhD in orthopedics and traumatology. And Patrick, you might be able to find yours. Do you remember? <laughs> so um, that's a, a long time ago, of course. And I would like to thank my PhD supervisor, uh, Professor K.M. Chen, um, who is an expert in sports medicine. And um, so from there on, I tried, I was really, um, I really passionate about um, research in tissue regeneration. Um, and then I worked with surgeons and they actually told us um, what are the most important um, factors that they are considering when they treat patients. And those actually um, help us to develop um, a lot of um, good uh, technologies. So you guys find yourself. <laughs> And of course, my um, family, my dear family, uh, my father, my mother here, and um, my husband, William. And uh, you can see my son from, <laughs> that was one year old uh, in our church. And now he's a 14 year old boy. So, <laughs> um, so I'm, I really want to thank all of you because, um, you know, uh, you bear with me <laughs> because I um, always work very late and then ask you to pick up and then 
uh, and ask you to wait for 10 minutes and eventually another hour, another hour. <laughs> so I think many of us have experienced that. <laughs> so this is actually what a researcher <laughs> will usually do. <laughs> Um, so I'd like to thank my ex, current, and future members of our lab. So my lab mem members are here. Please can you stand up? And I would like um, to say thank you. And without you, nothing can be done. And it is actually all your work. And um, you, you have done a very good job. And you will continue to do that. Thank you. Um, and a lot of collaborators, uh, mentors, and um, co-investigators, and um, around the world, uh, in CHK, in Hong Kong U, uh, Singapore, and elsewhere. So my passion in tissue engineering research actually start a long time ago. And um, that there was an, a shocking experience that actually made me so determined that I have to go ahead with this research, um, you know, throughout, I mean, for, for the rest of my career. So that was actually when, when I was in MGH, I had a collaborative project on using laser medicine to sort of like help um, uh, to uh, uh, do some biosurgical stuff on uh, skin graft. So um, I visited uh, Shiner's hospitals and worked with uh, Dr. Robert Sheridan, and um, he's a pediatric surgeon. And that day I uh, went to this operation theater and there was a four-year-old girl and she was covered full in full body, all different kind of dressings, artificial skin and skin grafts and everything. So uh, the doctor told me that uh, her stepfather put her on fire and the whole body was actually uh, badly injured. And uh, he was uh, showing me that this tissue engineered skin, the bilayer one, and that was a round one. He, sa he said that he can only put this on the kneecap of the girl because that the taking was not good. Therefore, you know, a tissue engineer graph actually would take better. Therefore, um, he said that um, unfortunately, he, uh, her cells can only make this big, and all the other body areas were was covered by like um, allogeneic graph and so on. Those were actually to buy time for her to you know, see recover. But then that tissue engineer skin, um, he told me he said that if you can make more, if there are many, you know, of these. Uh, pieces of uh, skin, then the girl might, you know, recover better, that might have been, you know, recovered already. So that shocking experience made me think that um, tissue engineering, although it's very, very difficult, uh, very difficult to, to um, you know, um, uh, all the way go to the end to, to um, um, help the patient, is actually the direction that um, I would like to um, um, contribute. So tissue engineering is a um, very elegant concept that um, um, people will build uh, living tissues by making use of cells, uh, made from the patient themselves or uh, other donor cells, together with the materials uh, we call scaffold and uh, some um, other um, soluble factor or other signals. We really try to, like an engineer, we try to build up something um, that can be used for tissue replacement um, for all sorts of tissue damages because of trauma, because of uh, um, um, inherited disease or cancer and so on. So that concept actually make me um, continue to um, you know, go into this field, find out um, the solutions, how to um, contribute. And honestly, I would say in this um, audience, there are many of them that they are actually working on in this area. Um, so in our lab, uh, we try to, uh, the ultimate goal is to build complex tissues that can be used for tissue replacement, including engineer osteochondral uh, 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 graft, um, ear cartilage, hair follicles, and so on. 
but during this process, we face a lot of uh, technical difficulties, and that is actually the driving force for us to develop some so-called enabling or platform technologies, which can be used to solve this problem, to enable us to continue. Um, and this platform can also allow us to ask some basic questions, perhaps work with basic sciences to understand. So because when we understand, we know the strategies, how to overcome those problems. For example, um, during tissue engineering, uh, one question is, uh, if we take the patient's cells and we want to expand them and use it for tissue engineering, a big problem is cells, when they, take, when they uh, leave their um, native environment, they actually will change. They actually lost their phenotype. They no longer functional. So in order to do that, to, in order to help the uh, cells to um, have their native-like uh, environment, um, like for example in this, in this picture, you can see the, the cells are actually, this is in native tissue, that they are in a very cozy and comf comfortable environment. But then uh, when we take them out and culture them, they actually become uh, you know, flattened and they uh, no longer function um, as they are in the native tissue. Therefore, in our lab, we try to uh, build from bottom up um, a environment for the cell so that the cells can um, feel like at, uh, at home and then they can perform well, they can uh, function well. So we developed this uh, laser-based technology that is a microprinting technology that we, so you don't bother about those uh, 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 the background. So basically we shine a laser into a liquid bath of proteins and then we can do bit by bit solidification by some photochemistry so that they can become, we can build a structure uh, a voxel by voxel. So basically it's a microprinting technology and uh, we can print a whole lot of different structures. We basically developed this into a programmable, programmable um, platform uh, because we can control, for example, the um, uh, micron, sub-micron features. They can be very tiny and these actually are the level of uh, signals that the cells can um, interact with and uh, we can control their topological feature. We can make any shape in 3D and we can uh, control their sublining uh, mechanical properties, uh, chemical properties. Uh, we can make gradient. Uh, we can actually do a spatial control um, so that we can basically print a house for the cells um, so that they can um, remember where they are, like that they are in the native tissue, so that we can allow them to um, grow and uh, function and mature into a structure that we eventually want them to become. So with this technology, we um, also develop um, a whole bunch of so-called multiplex uh, cell niche factor chips because um, many researchers like us, we, uh, when we don't know how to culture those cells as that they are in native tissue, uh, you can do a very rapid screening to find out the best condition um, so that you can have an all-in-one um, um, condition. And this, that condition, the cell can grow like um, um, as that in their native um, uh, tissues. So don't bother about all those pictures. I just want to show you there are many factors that we can do a screening and shortlist and pick up the best one and make them into a all-in-one chip um, um, uh, that, that is to enable the cell to grow like um, um, in the native tissue. If you can see the upper corner, the rounded one is the intervertebral disc in the native tissue. But then once we take them out and culture, they become flattened. And we don't want that. Therefore, we want to print them an environment so that they can grow as that in the native tissue. As I mentioned, this one, among many combinations, we found one that is uh, like a fiber beads-like structure, and that structure are able to support the intervertebral disc cell to grow nicely as that in the native tissue. The idea, so you don't need to go into the detail, the idea is uh, we can um, have different 
type of cells and we can have different type of niches and therefore we can optimize, we screen and optimize and build them the best environment for them to grow and, and uh, mature. And that is uh, one of the technologies that we developed, try to give uh, the solutions for the cells um, when they, they leave their home, they actually become very different. So this is a list of collaborators that we are working with um, on different type of cells, including neuronal cells, um, uh, retinal cells, uh, neonatal stem cells, and um, 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 oocytes, for example, so in various areas. Um, we try to help the researchers to find out the best condition um, for their cells to grow and mature. Another uh, challenge that we face is um, the scaffold design usually are by like trial by error or this are not really, really rationalized. And with this platform, as I've mentioned, the fiber B structure, we actually found that the intervertebrate this actually uh, intervertebrate cells grow almost like uh, the same as that they in native tissue. And inspired by this fact, we develop scaffold based on the fiber and beads type of structure, of course, together with many other chemical and biochemical um, um, factors, we make a biomimetic uh, scaffold, which can um, and allow us to build a intervertebrate like uh, structure, which uh, hopefully uh, we are actually working on animal models. Hopefully that would um, give a, a cure to the um, introvert with this uh, degeneration. And in fact, we have demonstrated that structurally and also biochemically, they actually mimic um, in the native, uh, the native disc. So with this platform, we continue to um, develop different um, 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 engineer tissue. And one of these um, um, problems that we have been facing is uh, tissues, en engineer tissues are usually immature. So they are not as the mature tissue that you and me have uh, because you know, they, are, they take many years and a, a long time and a lot of other factors for them to mature into a functional tissue. So this picture shows a lot of different um, tissues. Uh, of course, by some staining, some method that we can review their structure. For example, tendon, uh, intervertebral disc, cartilage, and muscle, they all look very different, right? And their structure and composition and type of cells are also very different. So, so when we um, make um, uh, so-called uh, tissue engineered um, um, structure, we would consider their um, native tissue structure. For example, one common uh, feature of all these tissue is the alignment of the cells. The alignment of the cells are actually very orderly, you know, aligned and oriented in a special way. And this is actually uh, very important to, for the cells to uh, give the normal function of the tissue. And um, with that, um, in fact, um, in tissue engineering, this field, uh, we have uh, some technologies devel developed for um, uh, decades that um, uh, we call bioreactors. And um, so these are the uh, devices that we can give the cells some kind of exercise. So we try to uh, give some exercise to give them stimulus, but then biomechanical one, so that they can bec become more functional and mature. Uh, for example, on the left-hand side, which is the cardi uh, cardiac uh, strip that we have built, that we subject them to uh, tensional forces because when our hearts are bumping, so they are moving, they actually are exposed to a lot of forces. And then um, uh, we have the uh, compression uh, uh, used for cartilage development uh, because cartilage also expose a lot of uh, forces when we jump, when we work or, uh, walk around. And also uh, torsional forces is when we do like exercise like twisting our spine. So our cells are actually exposing to regularly to this kind of uh, mechanical forces. 
Um, so one example, just want to convince you that um, it actually works. So we put the cardi strip, which is uh, cardiomyocytes, together with other niche cells into actions. So we stretch them, and uh, we do find that a more mature cardiac strip actually end up after this so-called exercise. And of course, we find out the mechanism, and in fact, they strengthen the cell and their environment, their um, um, interaction. So they actually grip on their environment stronger with a much stronger uh, so-called adhesion. And we do find that there are they be, the tissue itself becomes stronger, and um, the twitch force is higher, and there are a lot of uh, mat maturation markers are uh, ongoing. And we also find that the cells, like the later one, so the beating structure, the, the cardiac muscle that they are beating, they actually are responsive when you give them some stimuli. For example, temperature increase from 20 degrees to 37. They actually increase in the twitch force and increase in the beating uh, f uh, um, uh, frequency. So that is to say, as a tissue engineer, we would like to make use of all these environmental cues and uh, factors no, no matter it is scaffold, chemical, or even biomechanical, we try to make the tissue a more mature one so that we can use it for tissue replacement and functional replacement. Um, another example is when we precondition a um, micro tissue with uh, um, a compression force, we actually find out again the mechanism of the mechanical force. So the cells are able to sense and then strengthen their interaction with their uh, mat uh, matrix material, and they actually become better differentiated in their later uh, uh, part when they when when we um, do like a bone uh, tissue engineer, we differentiate them into bone. They actually so we sort of like prepare the cells well to go ahead with um, tissue engineering. So all these concepts are um, very um, interesting and um, useful for us to do functional tissue engineering. And another very important and very difficult challenge that we have been facing is, so if you ask surgeon, when they do surgery, they replace with a healthy tissue um, when, for example, the cartilage and bone, uh, we call chondral, or even intervertebral disc uh, with the vertebra, and also the tendon and ligament, they always um, harvest the from a bone to bone end, so that you have a graph that consists of multiple type of tissues: uh, cartilage and bone, tendon and bone. In, uh, uh, vertebra and also uh, uh, intervertebral disc. So this actually is very important because the complex tissue consisting of multiple type of tissues, we need to um, retain the integrity of the tissue so that they can become um, easily integrated with the um, host tissue when you uh, implant them. So with that, I just want to show you that cart our cartilage project is actually um, um, a very, it's a long journey that we developed to try to help uh, people with cartilage disease and injury. This can be degenerative, can be trauma. And we, so, so when we work on these, it's very amazing. So when we see, you see that osteoarthritis, that is actually a, a piece of cartilage that we take, uh, our, our surgeon collaborator take uh, from the patient when they are undergoing a total drum replacement. So all the cartilage is gone, only the bare bone. And that is the reason why when you walk walk around with such joints, your bone basically crash into each other and that's super painful. So cartilage injuries can be very bad. And um, current surgical uh, method like microfracture and autograph are not, um, can only solve part of the problem. And there are a whole lot of um, disease um, um, uh, patients that they cannot, they have basically have no choice, no other um, option um, until the cartilage eroded and degraded in a way that they need to face the terminal treatment, which is the total joint replacement.
So our lab, we um, develop a strategy we call engineered uh, osteochondral tissue, EOCT. We try to take the patient's own cells, either from bone marrow or even adipose tissue, and we try to um, um, extract those uh, stem or stromal cells out and expand them. And we develop processes that we can make them into a module-based tiny micro tissues of cartilage and of bone. And then we develop strategies to assemble this into a complex plug, which is very similar to autograph, although it's much uh, less mature. And we call that complex tissue plug with a shiny cartilage on the surface and the bone graft on the, um, uh, on the bottom and with an interface in between. And using this, um, um, our surgeon can um, implant them minimal invasively through arthroscopy. So that is what we have developed. So over like more than 10 years of work, starting from very simple cells that we get from patients and um, by a GMP gray biocompatible material such as collagen, and then we develop into um, tiny uh, cartilage and bone-like structures. So over four generations of different um, product development, eventually we um, come up with a all-in-one, one piece of structure with cartilage and bone, um, which are um, basically mimicking the native organization in the joint tissue. And um, uh, a long journey going through different animal models, we actually compare our um, plug, which is in the middle, EOCT, together with the micro, uh, the bone marrow stimulation, which is uh, one of the most commonly used surgical procedure and autograph, which is so-called clinical gold standard, but that clinical gold standard is no longer in use because uh, it would actually hurt the patient's own cartilage. Cartilage has no blood vessels, no nerve. Once you hurt, it cannot repair. And um, we actually found that in one month, which is actually this pink stuff, um, the cross-section, you can see a nice piece of cartilage, very juicy, very resilient, that can recover, regenerate in one month's time, of course, in animals. And then um, over like one year, you can see um, the EOCT that we still have a very thick and nice hyaline cartilage covering the bone. Uh, the, uh, at the joints, which is comparable uh, with the autograph, but then the one with the, without um, the EOCT, which is the surgical device, uh, surgical method that you can see cartilage thinning already. Cartilage thinning is a sign of degeneration. So that means the cartilage becomes thinner and thinner. The bone actually invades into the cartilage until it's degenerated in, 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 into, into an, uh, an extent that um, the, the bone actually are exposed and then crush into each other when you walk and jump. And of course, there are other data support us to believe that the um, EOCT can provide a, um, at least a partial solution for cartilage um, uh, injuries so that it can at least um, 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 supplement or be an alternative, perhaps a better one, um, to the micro uh, fracture and perhaps uh, a comparable uh, gold, uh, clinical gold standard with the autograph. So that is what we um, try to develop. And, and we think that you think that we have done with the research and we can just, you know, sit there and relax. And I can tell you <laughs> that is actually a beginning <laughs> of the whole journey because in order to have a um, uh, R&D result and um, promote and facilitate and push until it become a clinically usable solution, that is most uh, you know, a difficult uh, a journey. And I must thank uh, many, many people, um, many collaborators um, um, from orthopedics, particularly uh, Patrick, Michael, and, and their team, and um, also um, our um, lab uh, uh, members here. 
Um, and a lot of, so this actually co covers like 10 years of research. So a lot of um, my first um, MPhil student was there. So, so your work is also here. So we are still, you know, working on this. And um, so it is not just a um, research done inside a university. It is something that you have to col um, collectively work with many, many different organizations. I can tell you that uh, the work that we are doing, the, the trial that we are trying to do, we have signed at least 13 different like, contracts and agreements with different industry sectors. These include, for example, um, um, the transportation, for example, because these, so in order to put them into the patient's knee, you have to do transportation with uh, uh, qualification, with good biodistribution. And um, so throughout the manufacturing process, you have to do it in clean room, you have to do it in a GMP uh, manufacturing facility, which is actually what um, the Chinese University and um, um, Hong Kong IB are actually pushing for, and then they have already have the uh, 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 facility here. And um, so we have been collaborating with um, um, Singapore as well on the manufacturing side. And, and there are many other uh, uh, parties, for example, the, 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 the QC test. We need the third party QC test to make sure all the checkpoints are for the manufacturing of that um, EOCT product that has to be uh, done in time. So there are so many milestones that we have um, uh, to go through, and actually we are done for most of them at the moment. Um, for example, uh, we have to develop a full quality assurance program because these are something that you eventually implant into the patient's body, and therefore um, um, a lot of um, um, checkpoints uh, on their quality, their potency, and so on. And uh, we work with our surgeons on uh, delivery method. We work with our third-party organization on validation of all different kind of potency and um, uh, identity tests and so on. So just want to flip through some of these development. Um, standardization and minimizing uh, human interaction. So really do, really ensure the quality of each of this construct has to be you know, done nicely. And we work with the GMP manufacturing facility on this. Sorry. So um, we work with our orthopedic surgeon team and in um, Chinese uh, University of Hong Kong, OLC. And we develop um, um, minimal invasive arthroscopy to deliver this construct into the patient knee. So we were using cadaveric knee, and it's you know, really like uh, uh, those in the OT uh, room. And we, you can find that that is the defect that we created. And um, the EOCT can be delivered through some simple surgical tools. And after the delivery, it immediately fills up all the space of the cartilage defect. And um, immediately MRI reviews that the defect is fully uh, filled. Of course, we need to do the clinical trial, and that is what we have been um, working on. So together with um, Patrick and also Wilson in QE, uh, we are um, now um, um, working on the uh, phase one trial to, um, um, on the uh, cartilage um, injury. So um, in the past few years, we have gone through a lot of work, including training uh, our people, our team, and go through the GMP manufacturing. Um, and then uh, we have attended different training, GMP training, um, elsewhere in Hong Kong, in Hong Kong IB, and in Singapore. And we, we have to prepare a whole lot of clinical trial-related documents which detail all, everything about the uh, EOCT, our bench work, our animal work, uh, and, you know, a whole lot of things. And we got the approval from the Department of Health 
on the uh, clinical trial certificate, which is also very important milestone for us. So we have this uh, hundred pages of um, 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 IB investigator brochure, which documented all the work done by you guys. And so we need to engage all different parties of the uh, manufacturing and clinical trial and also transportation, testing, biobanking, and so on. So it actually, ATP, the so-called advanced therapeutic product, which our tissue engineering product belongs to, um, is regulated as um, um, drugs. So it actually involves a lot of associated industry. And that is very, very important. And uh, hopefully, so Hong Kong, I think we are building this um, 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 associated industry. Uh, so a lot of um, supporting industry as well. Um, so these are just some samples that we got, the bone marrow samples. And we have validated all the transportation. So everything, so you have, the, you have to have the right surgeon to sign. You have to have the right nurse to receive. And it has to be keep in a particular storage because, you know, these are what we eventually will put into humans. So we have to be very, very careful. And these are some snapshots that we took in clean room. So our team, um, so I'll just tell you, working in clean room, is something uh, very stressful. And our team, they, they, they will enter into the clean room at 8 a.m. and come out at 7 p.m. Uh, without drinking a drop of water, without eating, and without going to toilet. Of course, they are given the chance to do so, but that they, they, they have a lot of things to do. They would like to finish, therefore, they, they usually don't drink too much water in that morning, right? So a lot of, um, you know, hard work. Um, so these are the cells and the EOCT that we have produced from the uh, sample that we get from uh, uh, the bone marrow from some source. And um, we, we did that in the claim room. And um, after we make them, we will ship back. Um, to the uh, hospital, and the hospital, our nurses, our uh, members, and all, our surgeon also, you know, we have to validate all these. It's a whole lot of um, hard work, and, um, but all of us really want to see the moment when we um, have these um, cartilage implanted into the patient's uh, joints, and hopefully that would help them. Um, yeah, so this is also the, uh, the arthroscopy that we have done. So now we are recruiting patients on this uh, trial, and we have already identified a few, and we need to do a lot of uh, uh, tests to, to, to make sure that they fulfill all the requirement. Our roadmap up to now, we have to thank uh, the government, universities, a lot of funding, a lot of people um, um, to make this um, um, happening. And this is our um, dream. The ultimate goal is to have personalized tissue, for example, cartilage repair. So in the future, when you have some problem with the cartilage, um, you can go to your own biobank with your perhaps dental pop or bone marrow or adipose tissue, and you can get those cells and then have um, send us the cells and then we make um, personalized um, cartilage, um, hopefully, and then um, um, our surgeon will um, implant them and uh, hopefully that would help them to regain motility and improve uh, their quality of life. So with that dream, um, we have to go back to work. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Chan, for an inspiring lecture. Please be seated. May I now invite the Vice Chancellor and the Acting Dean of Medicine to take the seats on the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the inaugural lecture. Please rise as the official procession exits the hall. Mm -hmm.